that will diminish over the years where we see working capital ratio reduced from the 376 it's currently showing year to date back to the, the full year forecast at around 215%. Um, on top of that, uh, it's also important, I think, to note that the rate debtors are tracking better than um, when compared to the same time last year by about $2 million. That's largely due to the amount of work that we do uh, in helping our, our rate payers meet their financial obligations and providing them uh, many different flexible ways to pay in terms of payment payments where they're um, facing some financial difficulty. So that's good work by the rates team in that area. Um, we currently have $31.7 million invested in cash investments. It's returning around 1.9% in returns. It's about tracking to market. Uh, also worth mentioning is our capital progress is tracking well at this point in time and compared to last year with 21.4% of the capital budget spent compared to 13% at the same time last year. So things are going relatively well in that space. Thank you so much for that. Councillor Sutton, would you like to speak to the motion? Would anyone like to speak against the motion? For the motion? We'll now go to the vote. All in favour? Motion carried. Councillors, we now go to 9.5, financial hardship policy on page 27. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion? I'll move that motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Jevin. Uh, Nettie, do uh, I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Ozavari. Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor yeah, Giovanni? The, the motion is uh, on page 27, and the recommendation is the Council adopt the updated financial hardship policy 34, uh, version 2.1. We adopted this hardship policy back in February of this year, and Council staff have uh, identified a, a number of items that need to be clarified. Uh, basically, this was to ensure that ratepayers experiencing any financial hardship are aware of the rating assistance available, which Mr Tysell has mentioned earlier, and the necessary requirements in order to apply for hardship. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Ozavari, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And the, the one further point I'd like to make is that in terms of uh, applications for hardship assistance, there is generally a distinction between residential as opposed to investment type situations and commercial. Good point. Would anyone like to speak against the recommendation? For the recommendation? Motion. motion, get those words right. For the motion. Any closing comments, con uh, Councillor Giovanetti? Uh, no, Madam Mayor. We'll go to the vote. All in favour? Against. against. Motion carried. Councillors, we now go to item 9.6, amended fees and charges. It's actually quite a long one on page 31, 32 and 33. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion? Oh, everyone's thinking about that one. Councillor Ozavari. Do I have a seconder, please? I'll second it, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Councillor Ozavari, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, Madam Mayor, this is uh, very straightforward. Uh, it's subject, it's a review. And the thing that I always find interesting about this is the distinction between the discretionary and non-discretionary fees, the non-discretionary being ones set by the State Government and the uh, rest of the uh, motion speaks for itself. Thank you, Councillor Zavari. Councillor Patterson, would you like to speak to the motion? Oh, yeah, just basically um, all it is is really adjusting fees to make it more hand, ha easy to handle for the staff, really, you know, $8 to $8.40 <coughs> around, um, just common sense. Thank you, Councillor Person. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? For the motion? Just like Councillor Summer. Thank you. I'd just like to point out that we do from time to time go back and adjust the fees. Just because we've endorsed it in a budget doesn't mean that things can't change. This is a good example of that. There's been a lot of talk around our parking, parking fees and it can be done at any meeting. We can go back and change it. Thank you for that, Councillor Summer. Would anyone wish to speak against the motion, for the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Ozavari? No, thanks, Madam Mayor. We'll now go to the vote. All in favour? Against? Motion carried.
We now go to item 9.7, which is contracts awarded under delegation and status of contracts advertised and yet to be awarded October 2017 on page 35. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion? Councillor Abdullah, do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Patterson, Councillor Abdullah, do you wish to speak to the motion? I would like to move the recommendation on page 35 as a motion and the recommendation says that the council note the publicly advertised contracts awarded under delegated authority and tenders that have been advertised but not yet awarded. So this is um, uh, the, this is something that's, uh, that we uh, see in most of our um, uh, meetings, actually every meeting, it's a standing item and it gives uh, uh, the confidence to community about uh, projects that are being awarded or that the tenders that are being awarded um, or are yet to be awarded. So it's basically a good example of uh, good governance and transparency. That's it. Thank you for that, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Patterson, would you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, we're having a little bit of a lull in this department. Um, there's several out for evaluation. Uh, one of the sad things I've found today is we all did the uh, St. George, George's Road hadn't had a tender submitted, unfortunately. And that's you know, sad, but that's one thing we want to get cleaned up. St. George's Road will be such a, a better place for all those locals down there. Uh, unfortunately, there's no one put a tender in for it. Uh, we know that there is an enormous amount of work going on around the state. It's, and the machinery isn't around, the companies aren't around, they're all busy. So it's, um, yeah, it's sad that they've, uh, they've had to re-tender it, but so be it. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Summer. I thought I'd just point out a few good news stories in here. One is 1766, which is solar installations on council buildings. I was just chatting to someone today about how important it is to lead by example. We were a solar city once, and this agenda makes mention of large-scale solar permits that may go into our region. So this is just another example of how we're moving forward in renewable energy. And I also want to point out 1799, which is construction of BMX lighting. They have been waiting many, many years to get this done, so I'm glad to see it there. They've got a very high quality track, and with this lighting, they're probably going to be able to attract national competitions, and that'll just add to our events capital. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Would anyone wish to speak against the motion? Would anyone like to speak for the motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, just make some Councilor comments. Hazen. There's, uh, an enormous um, quantity of work out here that's being tended and being evaluated. And I'll just um, hark back to comments I made at the last meeting when we determined not to have a formal meeting in January. I either suspect we're going to have a very heavy workload approving contracts in our December meeting, or I sense a special meeting in January on the, on the cards. Thank you for that, Councillor Hazelman. Would anyone else like to speak for the, for the motion? Would, do you have any closing comments, Councillor Abdullah? Um, just wanted to thank um, uh, Chris, uh, Councillor Chris Hazelman, for the heads up. Thanks. <laughs> but the rest is all good. Thanks. For the vote, all in favour? Against? Motion carried. Councillors will now go to item 10.1 Community Sustainability Grant. Am I on the right one? Oops, sorry, missed one. Here we are. Just gone backtracked. We'll go to 9.8, contract number 1836, debt collection services, on page 39. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion, please? So move, Madam Mayor. Councillor like Devonetti. The recommendation on page 39 is, is the motion that the council approve the engagement of Mid State Credit Management for contract 1836, debt collection services. Uh, contract is based on schedule of prices, authorise the CEO to sign and seal the contract documents and authorise the CEO to award the initial contract for a period of two years with an option of two 12-month extensions. Thank you for reading that out. It's quite a long one. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Zavari. Councillor Gevinetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, Madam Mayor, this is a procedural process that uh, councils follow on a uh, biannual basis um, and more often if they... Are given if the companies are given extensions we as a business are no different to any other business we're not immune from uh, attracting bad debts and we need to uh, put this uh, this service in the hands of experts and uh, mid-state credit management have been around for a long time and have a, a good uh, reputation in that area so I, uh, I fully support the motion 
Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Olivari, would you like Please. to speak to the motion? Would anyone like to speak against the motion? For the motion? Councillor Summer. Just a point of clarification. Um, so none of these are local businesses. Is that why we don't have the criteria of local content? Or is it because it's an external consultant? Councillor Summer might wish to uh, repeat her question now that Mr Teitzel's got our attention. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the reason for not having 10% local content in the criteria is that because it's been sourced by an external consultant? Uh, yeah, it was... Yes? Because <laughs> yes. our procurement policy does stipulate 10%. Yeah, yeah it, okay. it was done outside that. Does that answer your question, Councillor Summer? Wonderful. Would anyone like to speak against the motion, for the motion? Uh, Thanks, Mr Patterson. make a comment, please, that it was a Procurement Australia contract. They did the work. Um, and there were 17 applicants for the tender. And um, it is noted that you can get 17 people who are happy to go around and collect money, but we couldn't, can't get anyone to dig a hole at St George's Road. So <laughs> there's more money in money than there is in holes. Very valid point there, Councillor Patterson. <laughs> Would anyone like to speak against the motion? For the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Giovanetti? No, no, I don't have any. We'll take it to the vote, please. All in favour. Now we go to item 10.1, Community Sustainability Grants Round 1, 2017-2018, on page 42. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion? Councillor Abdullah. I would like to move the motion or, um, recommendation on page 42 um, as motion. It says that, uh, that the council adopt the recommendations of the community sustainability grants assessment panel to fund the following four sustainability grants to the total value of 8,547 GST inclusive. And there's a list of four uh, uh, applications that have been successful. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Summer. Councillor Bula, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, I would like to say that it's so uh, pleasing to see that these sustainability grants um, have been uh, initiated and uh, the sustainability team and our waste uh, team, uh, waste management team, um, uh, have teamed up basically to contribute towards this grant uh, fund and, uh, and to encourage community to, to uh, contribute uh, in, in, a, in a positive way and to contribute towards the goals of having a sustainable environment and waste uh, minimization. Waste uh, minimization um, is, is an important objective. So it's good to see that, uh, that, this, um, that we have received um, applications. However, I do notice that uh, we received only five applications out of which four were successful uh, for this grant. And I do hope that in future more and more uh, community members become aware of this, uh, this um, support and this funding grant that's available so that they can take uh, uh, sort of um, uh, concrete steps towards uh, making our uh, environment better. So clean, clean and green Greater Shepparton we are all aiming for and I think Council has made a good, uh, has, has shown the, the support behind these uh, uh, activities. Thank you for those comments, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Summer, would you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, only to say that it's a shame that one of these did miss out, and that was to cheer a community house for their cubby shade sale. And the, they requested $2,000, which is quite a substantial amount of money for someone like the com community house, and not all that much money for us. Unfortunately, it didn't fit into the criteria of what we were looking for in terms of community sustainability grants. And I think that's a shame. I think perhaps if, if shade sales aren't included, then maybe we need to go back and have a look at what criteria we are using. Because as the climate heats up, this sort of infrastructure around the municipality is going to be more and more in demand. And if we have communities, houses, and all of the rest of the community groups um, bringing attention to it ourselves, then bring attention to it ourselves, then these grant processes would be a great way of getting it done. Thank you for those comments, Councillor Summer. Would anyone wish to speak against the motion? Any councillor like to speak for the motion? 
Any closing comments, Councillor Abdullah? No further comments, thanks. We'll go to the <coughs> vote. Those in favour? Against? Motion carried. We're now going to item 10.2, adoption of amendment C197, anomalies and adopted strategies on page 49 and 50. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion, please? Councillor Azavari, what would you like to? I would like to move the recommendation contained on page 49, uh, items one and two and three inclusive. 50. Page 49 and 50. And sorry, and 50. Just a couple of pages. Yeah. Thank you for that. Do yes. I have a seconder, please? Yes, Madam Mayor. I'll Councillor Hazelman. Councillor Osavaro, would you like to speak to the motion? Well, I could read the executive summary, but uh, my take on it is basically that uh, this amendment is uh, basically set to improve, simplify and clarify the language around the Greater Shepherd and Planning Scheme. A lot easier for everybody to understand exactly what the provision is. Thank you, Councillor Zavari. Councillor Hazeman, would you like to speak no, to the Mayor. motion? Not would anyone like to speak against the motion? Councillor like to speak for the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Zavari? No, thank you. We'll go to the vote. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Councillors, we'll now go to item 10.3, adoption of combined amendment C190 to the Greater Shepherd and Planning Scheme and Planning Permit Application 2015-360 to Bridge Road to Lambert, combined rezoning sub subvision, subdivision, page 57. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion, please? Councillor Patterson, what would you like to move there? Oh, yes, I'd like to move the motion. Thank you. On page 57, I won't read it out as it's quite substantial. <laughs> yes, do I have a seconder, please? I'll second that motion. Councillor Giovanetti, Councillor Patterson, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, this has been going on for quite a while. It's a um, subdivision out there on the edge of the Tlamba Township. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of land. I know it pretty well. I drive past there very regularly. Um, they've had their issues with the um, flood overlay of course which wasn't anything too serious but then the bushfire overlay came along and that really set them back anyway they've done a lot of work um, and now it's been um, ticked off by all the relevant authorities and it's right to go so <coughs> they need to tick here tonight so uh, I'd certainly encourage my fellow councillors to um, support it and it'll allow that little town of Lambert to grow without getting too big and it'd spoil it but it, uh, it certainly they'll um, enjoy the extra town folk. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just that I concur with uh, Councillor Patterson in relation to the uh, development options now available to the Tullamba Township. As Councillor Patterson said, it's a great little town. And um, I'm just trying to remember from memory, I think it's about 13 blocks are going to be most available through this subdivision. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. I think, and I think that's great for the town to progress adds kids into the school, as well as uh, improve the township facilities. Thank you, Councillor Shepanetti. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion, for the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Patterson? We'll now go to the vote. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. We now go to item 10.4, the 2017 International Engagement Progress to Date. On page 67. Madam Mayor, I'd like to move the recommendation on page 67 as a motion, please. I thought I'll you might. Read it out. It's not that substantial. Let the Council note the outcomes of the China delegation and endorse the actions within the China report 2 9 September 2017. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Ozavari. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Well, yes, I will. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think all councillors have seen the report. And I won't go through word for word, but I will just give you a brief. Uh, outline of the actual engagement uh, policy progress to date. Uh, obviously, we've been to China two times now in uh, nearly a 12-month period. The most recent visit, as the executive summary highlights, um, I think one of the greatest achievements of uh, these trips is that uh, the protocols that were just announced on the 9th of November, this is the stone fruit protocols for our uh, region, I think personally is probably the most important 
change in the fruit industry in 70 or 80 years. I don't know whether the wider community really grasps the impact that this will actually have. Now, I would love to claim credit and the CEO and, all, and the visitors who went with us, but uh, I have no doubt that we had a significant input into that in regard to meeting with not only the uh, Chinese uh, delegation or the government officials that had some input into this, but also, strangely enough, we had to go to China to form a closer ties with the Austrade and, and Business Victoria, <laughs> which is just the way it worked out. So having said all that, the relationships that have been gained now have been cemented uh, are working already, and it's not just the, the uh, fruit industry that we've capitalised on. As councillors all know, Madam Mayor, that we have upward of $300 million worth of solar investments waiting for the trigger to be pulled here uh, in Greater Shepparton. Whether that happens or not, in the same uh, amount that we expect it to happen till that all is it will be determined by um, objectors and all the process that needs to be gone through. But having said that, I personally believe this engagement uh, strategy, international engagement strategy, has worked far beyond our, our actually dreams at the, at the beginning of this. We. I don't think we believe that we'd be this far down the track, to be quite honest. So um, it's a great policy. Um, I encourage everyone in the wider community to read our report if they can get access to it. And um, we'll just go on to bigger and better things in the future. Thank you, Councillor Adam, for that great update on that as well. Councillor Ozavari, would you like to make any comments? Uh, no, thanks, Madam Mayor. Would anyone like to speak against the motion? For the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Adam? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. We'll now go to the vote. All in favour? Against? Motion carries. Council, we now go to item 10.5, Planning for Sustainable Animal Industries, on page 72. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion, please? Councillor Patterson, what would you like to move? Um, I'd probably like to move the motion on page 62 that the Council receive and note the submissions relating to the proposed planning reforms uh, for sustainable animal industries. Thank you for that, Councillor Patterson. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Giovannetti. Councillor Patterson, would you like to speak to the motion? Um, quickly summarising, it's probably try, it's some legislation that's trying to separate city from country folk in lots of ways. Uh, it's where the two are meeting with animals. It's becoming a bit of a problem. This will give them more um, more onus on the people shifting into the areas to be aware that it is a farming zone. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Councillor Gebanetti, would you like to speak to the... No, Madam Mayor, nothing further. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? For the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Patterson? No, thank you. <laughs> We'll now go to the vote. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. I go to item 10.6, Implementation of Commercial Activity Centre Strategy Amendments C192 and C193 on page 9, oh, sorry, on page 77 and 78. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion? Councillor Summer, what would you like to move then? I'd like to move the recommendation on page 77 and 78 as it, as it reads. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Do I have a seconder, please? I'll second that. Councillor Hazel and Councillor Summer, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, yeah, I think that the implementation of this is the culmination of accumulation of a, a lot of hard work and a lot of analysis of where we're at as a city centre. There's some recommendations in this that will prioritise high density living uh, within the centre, which is great because we do have an urban sprawl which is impacting on things like youth retention and um, car use. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're also looking at cinemas and trying to condense cinemas within the CBD and not having them in external areas which could draw people away. So CBD is front of mind. I love most of the recommendations in this and I'll be more than happy to support it. Thanks for Councillor Summer. Councillor Hazeman, do you wish to speak to the motion? Um, yeah, yes, Madam Mayor. Look, um, in a lot of ways, there's are rather complex and particularly if you, you read through the, the, the motion as moved point by point. Um, 
Amendment C192 uh, essentially implements the uh, Greater Shepparton Commercial Activity Centre Strategy, which was adopted back in November of 2015. And then C193 is a combined rezoning and um, proposal from LASCORP for a uh, development in the north. So for um, cost and logic reasons, it was um, the panel um, that met considered both uh, amendments and the, the submissions that were made to them. And the recommendation that we're, and the motion that we should be adopting today outlines uh, the deliberations of the panel and a, a somewhat uh, complex outcome in terms of um, unusual, I don't recall seeing it before, that the second part of the amendment, um, C193, um, was split away. We've got part one, the public acquisition overlay relating to, uh, to drainage, and part two, which is the LASCOR proposal, um, which has been, uh, consideration has been deferred for a period of time to allow other activities potentially to occur. So it's a, a rather unusual uh, panel report and recommendation, but um, if you read through it in some detail, I think people will understand the logic behind it. Thank you, Councillor Hazeman. Do I have a councillor that wish to speak against the motion, for the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Summer? Um, yes, I think perhaps, um, even though I moved it, I didn't realise it had such uh, specific specific points about the IGA development. So, trying to work out how this melds in with the next motion. Um, yeah, even though I moved it, I might not be able to support that motion after all. Okay. Hello. Now we'll go to the vote. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Now, councillors, we go to item 10.7, the IGA Stage 2 planning application. We have had a change which will actually be put up on the board behind me here. In relation to the IGA Stage 2 application, planning application number 217-177, section 10.7 of the agenda, I wish to note the following. On Friday, 17th of November 2017, the permit applicant filed a failure to determine appeal at the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. As a result of the VCAT application, Council no longer has the power to make a decision. Therefore, a revised motion is proposed and sets Council's position at the future VCAT proceedings. Officers recommend that if Council had the ability to do so, it would have refused the application and revised recommendation has been circulated to Councillors and is on the screen. Do I have a Council wishing to move that recommendation as the motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, I'll move the uh, recommendation as a motion as um, displayed on the screen. Thank you, Councillor Hazeman. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Patterson, Councillor well, Hazeman. Uh, Madam Mayor, point of clarification, please. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, if the Council goes to the VCAT proceeding without an adopted position, what effect do, does this have? I might call on Mr Harriet. We uh, might refer to Mr Carlos to give us a comment in relation to that, which he has done previously. to officers how we will um, respond at VCAT. Has it answered your question, yes, Councillor Lavari? So I was still looking for a seconder for the motion. Oh, sorry, we have got Dennis, yes. <coughs> Councillor Hazen, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, this is not a, an unusual circumstance that um, in the past when we've had um, this situation arise where an applicant has um, taken the council to VCAT on the basis that we haven't determined their position within the, the required 60 days. Um, yeah, I do know too that the 
application was lodged on the day that the agenda for the ordinary council meeting was published. So it's uh, not surprising that this action has taken place. Um, we are the responsible authority and on precedent it would be uh, remiss of council if we didn't um, appear at the CAT and be represented and have a position. If we had have had been in a position to consider the application, the officer's recommendation would have been to refuse. And this simply provides them with the tools um, to now adequately and appropriately represent the council at VCAT and pursue the report as published in our agenda and the outcome that they originally proposed. Thank you, Councillor Hazel. And Councillor Patterson, would you wish to speak to the motion? Our being covered very well. Thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion, Councillor Summer? Uh, yeah, I don't actually think we should be trying to refuse this application. And I think it's quite at odds with the recommendation that we've just passed. The recommendation we've just passed has a, a deferral consideration by six months to allow the owners of IGA an opportunity to work with council to determine the capacity of the site, to provide a second full line supermarket and integration with surrounding land uses. Yet in this motion, it says that council would have refused the application. So what was the six month for? Was it just a token gesture and then we were gonna say no anyway and that was already decided or why are we suddenly sure that we would say no? I think that's a very preemptive decision on the part of this recommendation. I think uh, by the time it gets to the tribunal, it'll be 12 weeks and we'll have more time to consider this. I don't think we should be supporting an application 500 metres down the road. Madam Mayor, it might be beneficial if uh, Mr Carms could explain the distinction of what between the two motions. Thank you, Councillor Hazen. of consideration of that matter for the six month period to allow IGA the opportunity to secure and provide evidence of securing a second um, supermarket on their site and get a committed tenant. Um, this particular item or what officers are recommended um, in relation to this particular item is that the consideration of um, the, the um, stage two proposal is premature, the application was premature. Um, and that in the officers note in their report that if IGA um, are able to secure a tenant within that six month time period, um, the C193 part two proposal will come back to council for further consideration, but that a new application can be made for the second supermarket on the IGA site. So it doesn't preempt um, the landowners um, or developers from relodging a fresh application when they've actually secured um, a tenant for that particular site. But at this stage, the application needs to be dealt with. I think perhaps that if we did allow this application to lapse, that would be LASCORP's opportunity to come and um, apply for their permit. And considering there wouldn't be any IGA application on the table, VCAT would almost certainly um, grant them 500 metres down the road another supermarket. I think it makes more sense to do whatever we can to consolidate an existing site. And if they need more time to develop a structure plan, then we should have given them, we should just give them more time if possible. Uh, I'm just not in any rush to secure another supermarket. We've got plenty within Greater Shepparton. And IGA have been part of this community for so many decades, I just don't think it's unrealistic to wait a while and support them. But um, it doesn't go against the strategy to support IGA. The strategy does not mention LASCORP specifically. I just think that from a community's perspective, being the last independent supermarket in Australia, that we should be giving them as much support as possible. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Summer. Would any council like to speak for the motion? Against the motion? Councillor Sutton? I'd just like to agree with Fern. I think what she's saying is very true. And I note that the panel recommended that it be split into two, a part one and a part two, 
and the rezoning of the proposed Woolworths site and that part two be deferred until council is satisfied that this is the best location for a second full line supermarket in Shepparton North. So if we get a second supermarket on the IGA site, then that meets with our commercial activity centre strategy, which is having everything on one site, not spreading things out along um, a great distance. And it just makes sense to me just to have um, not consider this application until we actually know what IGA is able to do. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Anyone wishing to speak for the motion? Against the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Hazelman? Uh, look, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I think there's a, a bit of a misunderstanding in that the, the Council doesn't have the capacity at the moment to deal with this application. We, we lost that, app, that opportunity come Friday. Um, what the Council does have, and which is the precedent in the past, is if we were able to deal with it, what the Council's position would have been. And no doubt in other, in other forums and other processes that were referred to previously, 192 and 193, things will play out there as well, as they will indeed here with this application, which was about the redevelopment of the IGA site, independent of the other considerations. So it's uh, only appropriate that we do provide our officers with direction, and that direction is to appear at the GAT, <laughs> Uh, be represented at VCAT and defend the position that would have been adopted if this um, had been considered by Council. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. We'll now go to item 10.8, two lots subdivision in the general residential zone on page 115, 116, 117 and 118. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion, please? Find your pages there. I'll move the recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Would you like to read the recommendation? Uh, I'd like to uh, move the recommendation on page 115, 116, 117 and 118 and obviously that if you're number good, of pages I don't propose to read out. Thank you. My, my copy is um, not clear. Can you read the motion? You read it again. <laughs> Thank you. Madison. Councillor Giovanetti, do I have um, a seconder please? Councillor Ozavari, Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. This is uh, an application that's come before us. Uh, initially there were some serious concerns from um, local residents uh, abutting this particular property, um, mainly due to the particular size of the, uh, the subdivision, which is only relatively small, about 453 square metres. Um, and I, I also probably concur with uh, some of those objectors that uh, 353 square metres is a very small block, but then I was told that we do have smaller blocks uh, here in Shepparton. Um, the, as far as I'm concerned, the big thing is that the developer has consulted with the, um, the relevant um, landowners uh, adjacent to th this particular property, and those issues have now all been resolved um, by the developer showing the plans, and it's now up to the developer to ensure that he um, uh, sticks with the plans that he uh, has um, submitted to the uh, um, to the uh, adjacent uh, property owners. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Zavari, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, would any council like to speak against the motion? For the motion? I would like to speak for the motion. Councillor it's, Patterson? It's um, something we haven't seen that often, if at all, but we're going to see a lot more of it in the future. Uh, a bigger our town gets, the more, as other towns have, the bigger our town gets, the more attractive it is to find a large block of land and put two houses on it instead of one. Uh, if you look at Melbourne, most of the suburbs of Melbourne, a lot of the suburbs of Melbourne now have two houses and they used to have one. Perth, all those major cities have gone like that and it'll continue to happen and it should happen too because it basically keeps people in a more confined area. It's easy for us to service them, it's easy for them to get to the, where they need to get to, in town, etc., without cars and parking, which we'll cover soon. Um, so it is very important and um, you know, it's an enormous amount of work gone on there. I, I, with the new estate out at Lambert, there's sort of half a page and for one house here, there's 
there's four or five pages, so it is complicated. I realise that, but um, it needs to happen and it has to happen more. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Would any councillor wish to speak against the motion, for the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Giovanetti? Uh, no, Madam Mayor. We'll take it to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. We'll now go to item 10.9, the Greater Shepherd and Heritage Advisory Committee adoption of terms of reference and nomination of community representatives on page 140. Do I have a councillor wishing to move the recommendation as the motion, please? Councillor Abdullah. Yep. I'll move the motion. Uh, <clears throat> I'll move the recommendation on page 140 uh, as a motion. It reads that the council adopt the revised terms of reference for the Greater Shepherd and Heritage Advisory Committee. And having considered the nomination receipt for appointment to the Heritage Advisory Committee, resolve to appoint the following community representative to the Greater Shepherd and Heritage Advisory Committee for a term concluding on 17 July 2019 um, for Kerry Donaldson. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Alzavari. Councillor Abdullah, would you wish to speak to the motion? Yeah, just quickly that uh, initially um, the, the community representation, um, we've got uh, three uh, community representatives on the committee. And uh, uh, there was this application from uh, Ms. Carrie Donaldson that was received. And uh, the, the committee was very pleased to see, uh, to see an interest, interest from the community members um, around uh, preservation of our heritage. And that's what this committee is all about. So uh, hence the, mem the committee uh, felt that it was, uh, it was uh, and, and they, they felt that it, was, it would be very Donaldson could join um, because she brings with her a wealth of experience. She's got uh, event management experience. She's got good uh, contacts um, in the community and would be able to, uh, to, uh, to uh, present some good suggestions uh, to the committee um, um, on the issues of heritage uh, preservation. So um, that's why there was a recommendation to amend the terms of reference, which currently uh, um, mentions three committee members uh, three community representatives instead of four. So with the update of this uh, terms of reference, uh, it would be possible to allow a fourth member from the community. Thank thanks. you, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Ozavari, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to support the comments by Councillor Abdullah in relation to the, the nominee, Kerry Donaldson. Uh, having worked with her on the Shepherd and Shami Committee, she's uh, very passionate, enthusiastic. It gives 100% to whatever she engages in, and I think she'll be a valuable asset to this committee. Thank you for those comments. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? For the motion? Councillor Summer? I need to say that it's great that we've got so much interest that we actually have to amend terms of reference so that we can fit more people in. Heritage can be quite controversial and the people who really value heritage want to be involved and that's great to see. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Anyone else wishing to speak against the motion? For the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Abdullah? No, oh, thanks. We'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. We now go to item 10.10, .10, the proposed referral of solar farms to the Minister for Planning on page 146. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion? Councillor Ozavari? We're still deciding. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation as the motion, please? Madam Mayor, I'll move that recommendation as the motion. As printed on page 146. And I will read it out, Madam Mayor. It's not that long. Thank the you. The council direct the chief executive officer to write to the Minister of Planning, requesting under section 97C of the Planning and Environment Act 1987, that the Minister for, for Planning decide the solar farm planning applications referred to the Minister in the Greater Shepparton City Council local government area, inviting the Minister point two for planning to establish a process that provides a fair and proper opportunity for all affected stakeholders to be heard. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Do I have a seconder, please? I'll second, Madam. Councillor Hazel and Councillor Adam, do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, I will. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Now, as I spoke earlier in respect to our international engagement uh, activities, uh, this activity is not just a uh, development from that, but it's also uh, an indication of how valuable uh, power is, obviously. We, we all, we're all aware of the rising cost of power, so um, Shepparton, or Greater Shepparton area, is 
has been uh, designated as one of the more adept and appropriate areas um, uh, logistically, I suppose, for setting up this type of activity. Having said that, we're also uh, a very active uh, agricultural producing area. That's what underpins our uh, whole economy here. So I'm fully supportive of solar farms and solar activity, 1,000%. Um, proposing or putting this towards the Minister, giving the Minister the ultimate responsibility for approving or declining these types of uh, applications, Madam Mayor, will do a couple of things. It'll prevent this council and uh, the applicants being tied up in uh, a lot of processes that could take many, many months. It will also discourage potential um, investors to our area, knowing that there's a long and convoluted process. Having said that, I don't think referring th these type of applications to the Minister will actually uh, dilute the, the result in the end. So uh, I'm fully supportive of it. And just quickly in reference to our prime agricultural land, well, we've got a lot of pressure on us in respect to uh, water, as we all know. There's, uh, we, we won't be getting any more water in the near future, if not ever at all. So if we drive around our area, you can see there's a lot of farms that aren't being irrigated anyway. And the proposed actual uh, percentage of properties that we're proposing, uh, I think, is less than 0.05%. So I can't see at this stage that this amount of activity will really impact on our arable land as such. Obviously, moving into the future, that can change. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Councillor Hazelman, would you like to make a comment? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, one of the uh, principal goals of our planning scheme is the protection of prime agricultural land, and that's going to cause uh, some degree of tension and difficulty for officers in determining uh, conflicting policies between energy production and agricultural production. Um, I note in particular the experience of the rural city of Wangaratta and the uh, issues there where an objector took a notice of decision uh, for a 20 megawatt solar farm to VCAT and the issues that caused and the response from the Victorian government. And I think it's very appropriate that we are referring this to government for assistance in determining uh, the future of how applications of this type should be processed. I think we can draw some analogies between um, other new technologies that have been introduced, in particular, say, like uh, wind farms or telecommunications towers. In relation to wind farms, the Victorian government did develop a whole range of standards and, um, and procedures and policies to be followed when assessing wind farms. And in the case of telecommunications, the federal government, under the Telecommunications Act, determined the, uh, the various standards that would apply. Um, I think as noted in the report, standards that would apply in relation to solar farms are effectively non-existent. Um, and we've all had um, representations from people in recent times talking about uh, potential impacts, um, both uh, positive and negative. And I think it's appropriate that we seek government assistance to develop the appropriate uh, policies and procedures for dealing with these to ensure that in the future we're going to be able to make informed decisions in relation to these projects. Thank you, Council Hazelman. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? For the motion, Councillor Patterson. Um, yes, I think from memory there was at least three um, other pieces of literature to go with this recommendation in the council suite just before, and they all, all basically dealt with the same thing. We need guidance from the state government here. If I have policies, for if you want to develop a chicken farm, what you're allowed to do and what you can't do, pig rears, all that sort of stuff, we need a paper that will allow us, our officers, and also the developers to see um, where it's applicable to put one and the regulations around it. Um, th there's lots of things, because they're so new in this area, there's lots of things that you hear about you don't know. Some of the orchards are saying that it'll increase the... Uh, temperature overnight in winter time by three or four degrees and, and that would be very detrimental to the orchardists because it doesn't allow their fruit to set because they need so many nights of frost to do that so we're not expected to know all that sort of stuff so we need someone that has a lot of money to be able to spend some of that on the science of it all work out where they should be and where they shouldn't be and that is then uh, and we had Steph Ryan in today and she was saying something's happened in Benalla you know, so we need a statewide consensus on that and the only way we can do that is through the state government and I'd encourage them to, um, to do it. 
Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion, for the motion? Councillor Giovanetti. Um, Madam Mayor, I concur with the, uh, with the comments of the other councillors. I think from the community's perspective, I think we need to see this as really the tip of the iceberg. We've received something like uh, five applications uh, so far in relation to solar farms, which equate to a, a total uh, generation of 217 megawatts of power. State government has uh, renewable energy targets that we're supposed to achieve by 2050 of 5,400 megawatts. So there's going to be a huge development in this particular area. And I think that, uh, as other councillors have said, it's beholden upon us to put it back to the government to determine the procedural process for all solar farm applications. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Any council wishing to speak against the motion? For the motion, Councillor Summer. I'd like to move an amendment, please, Madam Mayor. Yes, would you like to please tell us what that amendment is? I'd like to insert a dot point after right to the Minister of Planning. So it reads, right to the Minister of Planning, requesting to work with the Minister to develop a strategy to balance the requirements of existing prime agricultural land and large scale renewable energy applications. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Davari. For the purpose of argument. Would anyone like to speak <laughs> against the amendment? Would anyone like to speak? Have the amendment uh, recorded? Have you Second dot point after right to the Minister of Planning. Requesting to work with the Minister. Oh, sorry, is, this a, is this a third dot point or an amendment to the second? No, no, it's another dot point in addition. Okay. Requesting to work with the Minister to develop a strategy to balance the requirements of existing prime agricultural land and large scale renewable energy applications. Clear? Would anyone like to speak against the amendment? She speak now. Sorry, sorry, Fern, yes, she can speak now. Thank you. It's just a minor adjustment, even though it sounds long, it's really just minor. It's in support of everything that's already been said. The only thing is that the motion that's put before us doesn't actually mention strategy, doesn't mention policy, it doesn't mention procedures. It just mentions that the minister will decide and the stakeholders will be heard. Now, I understand that um, it's early days, but I think that's really no excuse to, get on, to not get on the front foot. We do need to future-proof this because it could be bigger than Ben-Hur. Uh, yesterday, we received a call from a high-profile community member who suggested it's an opportunity here and we could be more strategic and that local government is best primed to draw that line around appropriate locations for solar that doesn't impose on prime land or devalue irrigation investments. Now I understand some of the argument around location is that solar farms prefer to be near the grid, but that's an argument that is across the board and quite negligible when you consider some of these are $100 million applications or plus. So with the Minister's input, and there's no guarantee that the Minister will agree to this, but it's just a request, there's no harm done. But perhaps a panel could determine an appropriate distance from the grid, identify appropriate locations that are not prime agricultural land, and then zone them accordingly, which would further avoid objections or public backlash. So it shows um, that we value agricultural land. And in the words of the person who rang us yesterday, you can shift a solar farm, but you can't shift irrigated prime agricultural land. Completed there, Councillor Summer. Thank you. Councillor Osabari, would you like to speak to the amendment? Oh, I think it's strategic. I think it's proactive. And, uh, I've seen Thank you, Councillor Osabari. Anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? I have a point of order, please. What do we call priming agricultural land? How do we define it? Well, the Minister might define that for us, doesn't she? In the ordinary sense of the meaning through you, Madam Mayor, 
it is what it is. It's, it's not rocket science. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak for the amendment? Against the amendment? We'll go to the vote. All in favour? Motion lost. Oh, sorry. Those against? Motion lost. Okay. Check the motion. We're now back to the original motion. Do we have any councillors wishing to speak against or for the motion? We'll go to the vote. Oh, sorry. Any closing comments on Councillor Adams? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to reiterate um, there is a concern about obviously uh, diminishing our arable agricultural land, but uh, as I noted earlier on when I moved the motion, at this stage, I don't think it's of any consequence. We are developing residential complexes that actually are larger than the proposed solar farms at this point, yet that seems to be going onto prime agricultural land and uh, not raising much concern. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Okay, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. Item 11, we have no tabled motions. Reports from council delegates to other bodies, nil received. Reports from special committees and advisory committees, nil received. Notice of motion, amendment or recession. We now go to 14.1. We have a motion, trial free paid parking. Councillor Sutton, would you like to please read out your notice of motion? On page 153. I'd like to move a motion that Council undertake it to trial free time parking in all on-street parking zones in Shepparton for a period of six months from the 11th of December 2017. The effectiveness of this trial would be measured in a way which is to be, to be determined prior to the impl implementation. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Do we have a seconder, please? Second oh. for the purposes of debate. <laughs> Just took away. Councillor Zavari. Madam Mayor, I'll foreshadow that if this uh, motion is unsuccessful, I will move that at the December ordinary meeting of Council that a trial of free parking be considered in conjunction with the officer's expert report. A set of criteria to evaluate any trial performance and the report from Care Park Australia on the proposed redevelopment of the multi-deck car park. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Noted. Sorry, Shelley, would you like to now speak to the motion? I would. I put forward this notice of motion because I really believe that it would be beneficial to the central business district of Shepparton and all businesses in this area. At present, this area is competing with free parking at Shepparton Marketplace, Riverside Plaza, Archer Street Plaza, IGA Shopping Centre, Marubna and Chatura. They are also competing with other regional cities in both northern Victoria and the southern areas of New South Wales, Albury, Wodonga, Griffiths, Wagga, etc. A few years ago, we were the envy of these cities as Shepparton was known as a place to shop and do business. Sadly, this is no longer the situation for our city centre. Free parking in these other regional centres and our own remote centres have enticed the customers away. People don't want to pay for parking and they won't if they're able to go somewhere where it is free. This may not be the only reason, but it's certainly a major one. We need to be welcoming people coming to the Shepparton CBD and encouraging them to come into the city centre to stop, shop, stay and do business. We shouldn't have the impediment of parking metres keeping them away. Commercial properties in the CBD are charged a higher rate in the dollar than other, other areas of Greater Shepparton and the added impost of metered parking has created a disincentive for people to come into the city centre which is giving an unfair advantage to the other shopping precincts. The CBD still has a high percentage of vacant shops and gives an impression of decline as businesses don't want to come into an area with high vacancies rate and little foot traffic. 
A free parking trial may help alleviate this problem, but we won't know unless we proceed to do this. I note with, many, with interest that many cities in, cities in Australia <coughs> are trialling free parking one way or another. For example, City of Adelaide to entice more people to visit Rundle Mall, Frankston City looking at introducing some form of free parking, Warrnambool has free parking at a central city car park. These are just a few. So I am putting forward this motion and hopefully you will support it. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Councillor Zavari, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, uh, I think it's something that we need to try. I, I think um, from my perspective, we've been talking about it for so long, I'd like to try something. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but we're doing something. Thank you, Councillor Zavari. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Patterson. Look, I, I, while I'm speaking against the motion, I can understand Councillor Sutton's frustration. We're all very frustrated with, with parking in general, and it goes back, well, someone told me the other day, 30 years. You know, there has been these trials that have supposedly happened, and, and Fred was busy and Norm wasn't. Um, whether it makes any difference or not, we need to find out. We need to put that up basically on a Bible on a wall somewhere. So if it doesn't make any difference, we need to have that out there and accept it so we can all move on. And I, you know, if it works, it works. That's terrific. But my concern about Councillor Sutton's one, I, I, I'm not worried about starting a trial. I'm worrying about the results and how we obtain those results. I don't want to go through a process that we lose a lot of money. It, it, it could backfire on shopkeepers with people just parking there and going and doing, well, you know, just going and working in their shop for the day. It could backfire, we don't know. So we need to be tight as we possibly can to be able to identify that, OK, if we have free parking, X business will be up 17.5%. Uh, other businesses not so close to Mel might be up 5%. Fred and Irk might be down 4%. We need to get those figures and have them done by someone who will, you know, that everyone has the confidence in. So then when we do get the result, that is it. You know, either way, we all move on. We, we understand that it does work or it doesn't. So I just don't think Councillor Sutton's uh, recommendation there or motion sort of, to me, it doesn't cut off at the end enough. We need to get it tight at the end. And that's my concern. And I don't think we need to go six months. I think that's far too long. It'll cost us a lot more money. But I do support a, I do support a um, parking trial. I don't necessarily believe it'll make any difference. I do support a trial so we can put it to bed for once and for all, and that's what needs to happen. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Anyone wishing to speak for the motion, against the motion? Councillor Gibinetti. Um Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I don't disagree with uh, Councillor Sutton's suggestion of uh, having a, 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 park, a free park trial. What concerns me with this particular motion is that there aren't any safeguards there for Council with the motion as it's read. We don't know what infrastructure requirements we would need to um, purchase and or change what we've currently got. And as Councillor Patterson mentioned, you know, how, do we, how are we going to determine the outcomes? Uh, how, how are we going to know what benefit there has been to the business houses within the CBD area? Um, I think this motion probably doesn't go quite far enough, whereas I think Councillor Hazelman's may be able to come up with some of those suggestions for us. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Anyone wishing to speak for the motion? Against the motion? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Look, I'm going to probably be saying much the same thing as previous councillors, that the, the concept of a trial isn't something that we should shy away from, but it's about getting there with the, with the right process in place. Um, the method of by how we would evaluate such a trial and take into account uh, the impact, particularly in relation to the financial impact on our, our budget. Um, what's been proposed here, to my mind, is, uh, is way too vague in terms of who determines and who approves the performance measures. Um, that's not defined at all in the motion and it leaves it open to interpretation. Is it the council is going to determine that? Is it the officers to determine it? whoever else. There is no other council meeting between now and the 11th of December and I think in that regard the motion itself is, def is deficient. Uh, certainly I'm not going to uh, debate now the merits for or against free parking. I think that's another discussion which we, the motion that I foreshadowed would certainly provide that opportunity at the December meeting. 
Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Anyone wishing to speak for the motion? Madam Mayor, not really uh, speaking for or against at this stage. Can Councillor Hazelman please uh, re Play your foreshadowed motion so I can understand it. Um, what I foreshadowed was that if this motion of Councillor Sutton's is lost, I would then move that at the December ordinary meeting of Council that a trial of free parking be considered in conjunction with the officer's expert report, a set of criteria to evaluate any trial performance and the report from Care Park Australia on their proposed redevelopment of the multi-deck car park. So you'd expect the officer's expert report to get back by that stage? I'd expect to see the report that was available in October. That clarified. Thank you so much. Any yeah. one would like to speak for the motion, against the motion? Councillor Summer? I would also like to foreshadow a motion. Or to do that with one on the table, a foreshadowed motion on the table? Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. So it's a very, very, very minor change to the one that we're debating now, that the council undertake to trial free all day parking in all day, in off street, sorry, in off street metered parking zones in Shepparton for a period of six months from the 11th of December 2017. The effectiveness of this trial will be measured in a way which is determined prior to implementation. So it's just exactly the same as Councillor Sutton's motion, but instead of on street metered parking, I will say all day off street metered parking. That's noted, thank you, Councillor Summer. Is anyone else wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Summer. Okay, I, I've got a lot written here, so it's likely I'll need more than three minutes. But this is I'll a see. There you go. The see how I go. <laughs> 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 if it's all correct, you're not getting yeah. another three. <laughs> <laughs> I may be lucky. Well, it's a pent up thing over the last few years where we really haven't been able to discuss this and debate it openly, so it's a lot of pent up things just written down. And I would also like to congratulate Councillor Sutton in her courage for putting up this motion because it takes a lot of guts to put what you think out there and argue the point and see whether you get support or not in a public meeting. And I can relate to the frustration at the parking issue because it doesn't seem to get to a head. It's one step forward, one step back, and nobody can agree. Unfortunately, I can't agree on this either but uh, we'll get into why. Personally, I think we're looking at the issue wrong. Like logic, human logic, without really thinking too deeply, would tell us that more people who park in front of our shop means more customers, but in actual fact, the opposite is true. So say the parking bay was full all day with two hour times and all that time was used up by the minimum amount, it's only could be four potential customers who may not even have an intention of entering your store but a well-planned parking layout that adheres to a transport hierarchy can have up to 100 or more potential customers walking past or bike riding past because it's more um, amenable without the cars there. So these people are at a slower pace and that allows them to actually look in the window and that's going to lead to a sale. If you're in a car, you can't really see, it's just a blur. And the congestion that this is going to cause with on-street parking is completely counterproductive because 30% of traffic con congestion is from people circling the block looking for a space outside their shop. Now, not only does that stress out the person driving and it doesn't really put them in a good shopping mood, it also reduces amenity. So people really, it's not a very pleasant place to be. Whereas drawing cars away from on-street um, roads would reduce congestion and increase foot traffic. Aubrey Wodonga has free parking, but they do follow a traffic hierarchy. They have a huge incentive of ample all day off street car parking spaces that are easy to access, and they have the disincentive for on street parking because they are limited times to one hour or two hours if you duck into a side street. Now these strategies are in line with our movement in place strategy, but the motion that we've got here today is the exact opposite. It suggests that we incentivise on-street parking and disincentivise somewhere that's already 40% empty most of the time, which is our off-street parks. 
I think if we looked at the next 50 years, instead of trying to recreate the shopping climate of 50 years ago, time already. No, I'll skip that. Yeah. And she gets no extension. Oh, hang on, I'll find out the important things. Okay, thank you for that. I'd really like to request more time to speak. if possible. Just see if she wants extension. You want an extension, Councillor? Yes, Sonner? please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, if I can. Councillors agree to an extension. <laughs> All in favour for an extension, see hands, please. Yes, granted. I uh, will concede we're not Melbourne. That's another thing I hear quite often, that we're not Melbourne. Yes, we have an urban sprawl. Yes, we have small towns. People are required to drive here and we will always need disabled bays in areas of convenience. But for the able-bodied person, walking from Corio to the mall shouldn't really be a major issue. And from a health promotion perspective, off-street parking may go somewhere, some way towards tackling a very real obesity epidemic in this region. I earnestly agree that parking needs an overhaul. I think the principle of raising revenue via parking metres is abhorrent. It impacts on our most poorest community members. But while we have that as an opportunity to create barriers and incentives, we need to follow what we can. We need to do away with coin-operated machines. We need to offer more all-day all spaces. And this motion doesn't actually address those issues. Um, people who go to a movie can't go to lunch and a haircut because they can't be bothered moving their car. Parents will drag their kids behind them because two hours is up, they're not shopping. A visitor from out of town will never shop here again because of a parking fine. Two hours isn't long enough, there needs to be more all day. Uh, as for, yeah, look, I think I've made my point and I'm not just going to talk for the sake of talking, but I feel like this motion is unnecessary and it may actually impact on small business to a point where they can no longer survive. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Anyone wishing to, to speak for the motion? Against the motion? Any closing comments, Councillor Sutton? Yes, thank you. Um, we've been speaking about this for so long and I just had to bring up something to put it out there and I'm glad everybody's had a say. I'm quite happy to um, look at Chris's motion Thank you. Because at least we've got something happening and something on the table. I don't agree that if we had free metres that we would have parking congestion. It, happened, it works in other places. People move in and out. We have two-hour parking in Nixon Street. We don't have a problem with people overstaying in Nixon Street. They move in and out on a regular basis. I can't see why they wouldn't move out of the CBD on a regular basis with two-hour free parking on metres. So I don't actually agree with that premise not actually what I said in any of what I said. I never meant to say that. And if there's new information added, we shouldn't be adding it to a closing comment. Thank you for that, Councillor Sutton. We'll now go to the vote. All those in favour of the motion? Against? Motion lost. We'd now like to go to Councillor Hazelman. Yeah, Madam Mayor, I'll, I'll move that at the December ordinary meeting of council that a trial of free parking be considered in conjunction with the officer's expert report, a set of criteria to evaluate any trial performance and the report from Care Park Australia on their proposed redevelopment of the multi-deck car park. Thank you, Councillor Hazeman. Do I have a seconder, please? Point of I would have through you, Madam Mayor, please. Good. <laughs> the, uh, the set of criteria, we, we haven't got that yet, Councillor Hazelman. Again, a point of clarification, um, Councillor Hazelman. Uh, you have said that a trial of free parking be considered. I just want to make sure that it's not free timed parking. Do, do we want to make a distinction between free and free timed? In a general sort of comment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've, I, I support free timed, uh, yeah, so I'm, that's why I, was, I wanted that clarification. I'd happy to incorporate this free timed parking. Okay, do we clarify we had a seconder there, Councillor Oliver? I'll second the motion, Madam Mayor. Oh, thank you, Councillor Adam will second. Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor Hazelman? Uh, yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. Look, I, I did um, prepare a whole range of uh, material tonight to talk about and debate about the merits or otherwise of free time parking and all of that, but that's probably now going to occur in December. This is about a process that we can have some confidence in. 
We went through a process where the officers prepared a report. Um, councillors asked for further information. Uh, weren't particularly keen to spend additional funding around uh, that process. Um, we've also talked at length about developing a set of criteria to evaluate the, the trial performance. And as Councillor Patterson always says, we need something definitive here that we can you know, make a, a decision one way or another. Um, and I think that's important. That certainly sets us um, a month between officers and councillors to work out what that criteria might be. And so that, that uh, if we do ultimately move to a trial, we're doing it on the basis of this is how we're going to evaluate it. And I also think it's important that the, the future around the multi-deck car park, we understand that Care Park Australia are proposing a redevelopment, a quite substantial level of expenditure at that site, and we would need to make a decision around our um, parking policies and processes into the future, having regard for what Care Park want to do as well. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. <coughs> Councillor Adam, would you like to make a comment? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate Councillor Sutton for putting this motion forward here today. Um, I think the frustration is, has been felt not just by Councillor Sutton, by all councillors, about the free parking debate. Um, I think councillors were uh, led, I wouldn't say led to believe, but were it was communicated to us that uh, this process of gaining more information and data could lead us into maybe uh, March or April of next year in respect to actually doing something about this. So the fact that it's prompted Councillor Hazelman to uh, put forward that motion has just brought this whole process forward and uh, we won't be dragging the chain on this any longer. That's all, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for that, Councillor Adam. Anyone else wishing to speak against yes. the, the motion? Councillor Patterson? I'll speak against it because I, I generally don't like, as most people know, um, policy on the run. Um, I think and Councillor Sutton's thrown a beautiful big fat hand grenade right in the middle of us and, and stirred us all up and I congratulate her for that. We, we're as frustrated as hell and our community is as frustrated as hell that we haven't been able to come up with a decision. But rather than going down the lines of tying us into the next um, no, when is it, December general meeting, we need to get set aside as councillors and staff a morning, go through every bit of literature we can come up with and ideas, thrash it out what we actually want and then come up at the December meeting with the answer. Rather than trying to legislate from here on in, things will work, some things won't work. But we need, we certainly, we need to come up with an answer how we're going to conduct this trial by December, I have no doubt about that, but I, I don't want to limit it by what we're going to do and what we're going to rely on. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Anyone wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor Zavari? Thank you, Madam Mayor. The words frustration are really at the forefront, um, but I'd like to add another word. Procrastination. Talk cheap, action's expensive and procrastination is endemic. Councillor Hazelman, in all the years that I've known him, has never been prone to uh, spontaneous or off-the-cuff policy. He's obviously given this considerable thought particularly in light of the fact that I wasn't aware of his motion until I walked into the council meeting tonight. But given the fact that uh, this is one of the most frustrating issues that we've been talking about for so long, we just go round and round and round in circles. And uh, I, for one, fully support that we actually get in, get in, get down, roll our sleeves up. And if we need to have a time, then December is it. Uh, it's all about money, you know. Their officers are recommending certain courses of conduct because they're trying to minimise the cost to council, how much it is. It's risk. It's about risk. You don't achieve anything if you don't prepare to take a calculated risk. Inform yourself, do all those things, but let's make a damn decision. Thank you very much, Councillor Zavari. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Councillor Summer? In principle, I agree with the motion. I'm just not so sure December is long enough for us to decide on any kind of um, evaluation criteria. I know we had, or at least my understanding was that we had an opportunity to engage people to do this properly, and I think that opportunity is still on the table if councillors decide. 
and that will cost less than most consultant reports. It was going to be for 12 months and that would arguably be more accurate and less confusing for the public. There'd be nothing promised and at the end of the 12 months we can reassess knowing that it's given to us, this is data given to us by people who are trained in statistical analysis. So I don't want to come back with, this, with a bunch of weak criteria and see once again an example like the Christmas trial. It was during Christmas and it came back to us saying it was a success but really the only evidence was that the parking bays were full and some of the people on the street um, accredited free parking as to why they're there which you would imagine that they'd do that anyway. So that definitely sent mis mixed messages and I'm hearing people say, oh we've done all these trials, we've done, had all these reports but we really haven't had a report that has any substance. So it makes it really difficult to make decisions. I don't think we're going to be evidence-based unless we can actually um, get someone external to um, do this trial if we decide to do the trial. I don't see too much relevance in the multi-deck report. I'm not quite sure why that is at all relevant to us. Uh, I don't believe that free parking is going to be in breach of commercial comp competition laws. Uh, considering the car park underneath the multi-deck is 90% full most of the time anyway, making that free won't interfere with their takings. In fact, all the congestion that's going to be on street, more people are probably going to use the multi-deck trying to get away from it all, making it more efficient and comfortable. So whether we want to support the multi-deck or not support the multi-deck, I don't think we should lose sight that it's a major building in a central location that has been neglected and dilapidated. I really don't think that it's relevant at all to what we do with parking, but that's just my opinion. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Anyone wishing to speak for the motion? I just want to put a point of clarification, Madam Mayor. Councillor Hazel, when you, uh, you opt to put this uh, at the December Council meeting, what date is that? Does someone know what that will be? The 20, 21st or 20th? 19th. 19th. So Christmas is pretty much all over by then. So it's not a Christmas trial. I just want to establish that fact. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? For the motion? I would just like to have a few um, comments myself in regard to... Sorry? There's been an objection, so you have to... Uh, you have to put the in the seat. Councillor Jill, would you please? Thank you. Um, thank, you thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Sorry to put you in the spot there. Um, I just have a, a, a comment. Um, obviously, you know, the business community feels that parking is contributing to some of their difficulties. We don't know that that's the 100% reason why things are happening the way they're happening, perhaps. But we do know that there's talk. It's been ongoing for such a long time. We need to listen to the people that it affects the most. And I think looking at some form of trial is definitely, you know, should be an option so we can get some answers. Otherwise, we're going to be in this same position in six, 12 months' time, two years, five years' time. I think it's time to just do some action. Let's get some results. Let's do some proper testing. And let's try and, you know, do something that's, that's proactive. It's gone on too long. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to clarify whether you were speaking uh, in favour of the motion or against the motion. Sorry, in favour of the motion. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, so we'll go to the vote. I think we've yeah, actually... You. Sorry, any final comments, yes. Council Hazelman? Um, yeah, just picking up on a couple of points that were made. It has been a long-standing issue. Um, I don't necessarily um, agree with the concept of it's been procrastination, but uh, there's been a diversity of, of opinion over many years on this issue. And just a quick scrutiny around on social media in the last couple of days reinforces that. If everyone's got a different opinion as to what the issue is, and I think that um, and I'd agree with other councillors in, in congratulating Councillor Sutton for basically bringing this to the forefront. <laughs> and um, what I've tried to do is put a bit of um, structure around the process from here and a time frame. I know people have talked about uh, you know, the December meeting is going to come around quickly enough. I won't 
harp on the matter of not having a January meeting any further, <laughs> recognising that leaving this until February was going to be far too late. We needed to get on, get moving. It means that we've got to do a power of work at, um, at briefings to be able to present a concise report at the December meeting so that we can make a decision. And I will point out that that decision will be around the consideration of a trial, not necessarily the format of the trial itself. That'll be part of the, the discussion and the decision process. Correct. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. Well, that's a good one to have completed, I will say. We now go to item 15.1, documents for signing and sealing on page 153. Yeah, so moved, Madam Mayor. Sorry? So moved. I'd like to move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Thank you. You're speeding things up for us. It was the shorthand we struggled with. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right to go now, Madam Mayor? <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to move the recommendation on page 153 that we authorise the CEO to sign and seal the following documents in agreement between Council and Goulburn Murray Rural Water Corp to remove an easement on uh, Tree Reserve abutting Ash Street and Balaclava Road, Shepherd, and to allow road widening. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Sutton. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak no, to the Madam motion? Straightforward. Councillor Sutton, anyone like to speak against the motion? For the motion, all those in favour? Sorry, any closing comments, no, Councillor no Giovanni? <laughs> all those in favour? Against? Motion carried. We now go to item 16.1, Council's Community Interaction and Briefing Program. Yes, I'm sorry, on page 155. I'll so move, Madam Mayor. Okay, Sorry, 154. The recommendations on page 155. Councillor Hazeman, thank you. Would you like to move that recommendation? I'm happy to move that the summary of the Councillor's Community Interaction and Briefing Program be received. Thank you, Councillor Hazeman. Do I have a seconder, please? Sorry, Madam Chair. Can I just uh, clarify something? On page 154, maybe it's just my copy, but item 10.10, .10, proposed referral of solar farms to the Minister of Planning. Is it? Misprint? I, 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 Apologies for that, it is a, a, a type error there. Thank you, Councillor Adam, for pointing that out. I congratulate the staff oh, on yeah. saving paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm sorry, now, did we have a seconder? Councillor Summer. And Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak? Was it you, sorry, or was it Councillor Hazelman? No, sorry, Councillor Hazelman. Councillor Hazelman, thank you, sorry, we're getting tired. <laughs> Look, no, it's just a, a standard listing of the, the range of um, activities that councillors have been involved with, and I'm sure in, re, um, in response to the, the typo and the heading, it'll get reflected in the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Councillor Summer? I just want to point out what an amazingly diverse community we have, all these activities going on, and there's nine of us now, so we can spread the load, load a bit better. I didn't get to as many as I'd like to because I've started... Um, almost full-time employment, but I will say that I did manage to get to the Dookie Military Vehicle Rally and I took my kids and they really enjoyed it. Getting out to the small towns, um, it's great to talk to residents and taking up these opportunities here um, is a great way to really get on the coal face of what the community would like you to do and how to represent them. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Would anyone wish to speak against the motion? For the motion? Any closing comments? Councillor Hazelman? Um, only, yeah, I will. I will comment on one of the, the items. Um, no, no, it wasn't going to be St George's <laughs> Road. We just assumed that. You just made that assumption. We assumed that would be a fantastic success. No, I was just going to uh, congratulate the people behind the River Connect uh, platypus technical session. It was a sensational um, evening. Um, some expert came up, presented um, at the, the senior sits. They had about 20, 25 people there talking about platypus in the, in the Goulburn River. Um, tremendous night, should be more of it. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. And you're the chairman. 
We now go to item 17.1, record of assemblies of councillors on page 167. Do I have a councillor wishing to move the recommendation, please? Councillor Ozavari. Would you like to read the... I'll move the recommendation contained on page 167. Thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Giovannetti. Councillor Ozavari, would you like to speak? Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. It uh, speaks for itself. Thank you, Councillor Giovannetti. Motion for the motion. Any closing comments from Councillor Ozavari? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. Our final item is urgent and other business. We don't 